Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today we are going to be planting out some peas into the vegetable garden. Today is February 19th. Uh, the schedules that I look at for vegetable gardening say that you can put your peas out on February 15th, so I'm actually four days behind that schedule. I don't think that matters all that much. But come along with me and let's plant some peas. All right, if you follow my channel, you know I am not a vegetable gardener. I really don't know what I'm doing in the vegetables, so I have been looking at a lot of resources, books, YouTube channels, TV shows, uh, websites, blogs, etc., to figure out what to do with peas. So this year I'm trying two types of sugar snap peas and one type of shelling peas, and uh, I have pre-sprouted them inside some wet paper towels inside of a plastic bag. As I understand it, this will help me uh, prevent the problem of peas um, rotting in the soil before they have a chance to germinate. You put peas out in the early spring when the soil has just unfrozen and uh, you want your soil to be workable, but often, you know, springs are wet and cold. And so sometimes uh, you can have problems with your peas rotting before they germinate. So what I did was I put some uh, paper towels down onto a surface, I got it wet, then I put my pea seeds onto the wet paper towel, folded the towel over so that it's on top and bottom of the pea seeds, and then I folded up that paper towel into quarters and stored them in these plastic bags. Today's the 19th, I believe I did that on the 15th. So they've been in this bag for four days. So now let's open this up and see how they're looking. Okay, I have three types here. You can see I, t I got dirt all over my uh, towels while I was working with them. This one is just regular old sugar snap peas. What we're looking for is germination pre-sprouting on these peas. Ooh, and we have some. There we go. This pea has germinated. That's one. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm looking at the peas. They almost all have pre-germinated. This one didn't. It's kind of shrivelly with no sign of pre-germination on it. So I'm gonna set that over there. I'm gonna sort them out. If they haven't got a pre-sprout on them, I'm gonna set them aside, but almost all of these do. This one doesn't yet have it emerging, but you can see that it's gonna be coming right out there, that white line right there. Another reason to pre-sprout your seeds is to, um, you can take out the ones that didn't germinate and then you know that you have 100% germination when you plant them into the soil. So yay, this worked well. These are sugar snap peas. I also have two more varieties. This one is um, a shelling pea called Strike. This one had um, a treatment on the seeds that prevents rotting, I think, is the purpose of it. But they had a pink colored coating on them. Oh, yes, germination on these as well. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, this makes me very happy. Let me see if I can sort out the ones that didn't pre-sprout. All right, so lots of pre-sprouted strike shelling peas as well. I don't know how many this is, probably 40, 50, something like that. Okay, and then the last variety that I have are super sugar snap. So two types of sugar snap. One is plain sugar snap, and this one is super sugar snap. And we'll find out if there's a significant difference in them. Yes. Germination on these as well. Excellent. Although not all of them. But on some of them that haven't germinated yet, I can see that under the seed coat, the tail of the root is getting ready to break through. It just hasn't broken through yet. So I'm gonna count that as yes, it is a pre-sprout even though it hasn't actually emerged. So yeah, there are fewer of these that have actually emerged than there were of the regular sugar snap. But still, um, good progress on a lot of these. 
Now, I think I'm just gonna toss these. They might sprout, but I'm planting today, so I'm just gonna toss those. The space where I wanna plant my peas is right along the edge of this uh, flower bed. This is the new flower bed that we put into the ground last fall. We haven't really planted it much yet. I'm imagining, work with me here. I'm imagining that starting from about four feet, there will be um, a trellis coming up. I'm hoping to make it a decorative one, but I don't exactly have a design in mind yet. But on this trellis will be my peas. And then further down here will be tall cup flowers like um, larkspur or delphinium or other tall cup flowers that creates kind of a tall um, wall here as well. And then down here, on this bed, there will be tall dahlias. So I'm imagining that once you start entering this grass path at this area, that you'll have a beautiful um, vegetative floriferous wall that accompanies you down the hill. So um, what I wanna do is pick about a four foot span here into which I'm gonna plant my pea seeds. They'll grow thickly and hopefully give us lots of beautiful um, things to enjoy, food to eat, and beauty to enjoy here as well. But before I can plant anything, I need to move the things that I have here. Yeah, it's not going to live there forever, trust me. Okay, now you see I have all these wild onions here. These are technically edible, but they're really difficult to try to harvest for eating, and they're bothersome at their root competition for my plants. So I wanna, at least for the pea area, I wanna make a space about 18 to 24 inches away from the edge of the bed that I clean these uh, wild onions out of, so. Okay, so here we are, so you can see what I'm seeing. Um, where the pots were is about the furthest I wanna take this pea bed, so. I'm going to try to get the onions out of at least this area along here. Uh, and if it's easy, I'll try to do more. If it's difficult, I'll just be happy with that. There's a full clump of them. Um, you pull them like that, you can kind of see the little tiny bulbs on them. Uh, they're just so hard to eradicate because when you try to save your soil, you end up also saving these tiny bulbs. So, I mean, you have to weigh how much you care about it. But like, here's one. And they're just so prolific in there. Ah. Such a hard job to get these out. I mean, it's not physically taxing, it's just frustratingly hard. Okay, so I've reached the limit of my time and energy that I have available for that task. So I'm gonna say that's good enough. I will definitely be fighting these wild onions as they re-sprout from all of the bulbs that I know I accidentally pulled the tops off of and left the bulbs in the ground. So it is what it is. We're going to do the best we can. By the way, I have tried to smother these wild onions with cardboard and compost and mulch to build a lasagna garden on top of them. And they just pop right up through all of that uh, material. So if you have experience with succeeding on getting rid of wild onions. Please let us all know in the comment section down below because I think there are a lot of people who want to know how to get rid of wild onions once and for all out of your flower beds or vegetable gardens as the case may be. So at this point I'm just going to have to count on hand pulling and hope that I weaken those uh, bulbs over time and that they die back but for now it is what it is. So now I have roughly a four by two section here of uh, ground into which I'm going to be planting my peas, but before I do that, I'm going to be adding some compost to it just to enrich the soil a little bit 
The soil that is in these beds is uh, a mix of compost and topsoil that was taken from down in the lower patio area. And then I am going to put in some organic granular fertilizer. I'm using plant tone today because that's what I have. Um, I just want to make sure that my plants all get off to a great start. If you're a pea grower and I'm doing the wrong thing, please tell me in the comment section down below. But this is what I'm going to do. I figure vegetables need nutrients, right? So organic compost, organic fertilizer, it can't hurt, right? Okay, I checked my seed packet and I verified peas want to be about 25 peas per foot. So I'm going to do like a zigzag, I think, of roughly two rows, maybe three um, of the peas. And so they'll be fairly close together, about an inch, maybe two inches apart, each of the seeds. I'm going to use this fat stick as a dibber, and I'm just going to start making holes. We'll see how this goes. All right, that was 12 in a foot, so I need to be planting them closer together. Be careful so that I don't hurt that little tail. All right, so this patch here has about 25 peas in it. It's about a foot long. So that's roughly the rate that the package told me to plant them. So it looks like I have 15 or 20 more. So we just keep going down here. All right, so that was 17 more. So now I have roughly two feet with 25 plus 17 is 30, 42, 42 peas. I'm going to move my marker so that it is at the end of them. And then I'm going to leave about four inches between this type and the next one. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, I don't have enough room marked out yet. So I'm going to have to dig out some more space. Very good. Now I have 37 sugar snap peas, one inch deep, one inch apart. 49 strike shelling peas, one inch deep, one inch apart. And 42 super sugar snap peas, one inch deep, one inch apart. This four inch wide row will curve along the edge of the border um, and I think hopefully if things go well it'll be a really nice kind of a wall of green right here to lead you down what I hope will become a tunnel of beauty after I get done with it so okay so I'm going to put in some of these um, plant stakes they're 24 inches tall put one on this end one in between this variety, one in between this variety, and one on the set. And I did that before I covered in the holes because I wanted to be sure that I know where each of the varieties are. Okay, now I need to protect these from squirrels, rabbits, deer, and who knows what else, dogs. So I'm gonna use these plant supports to rig up a, sort of a safety measure for them. So, so I bought some landscape fabric uh, and hoops to protect row crops last year. I didn't end up using it last year and I can't find it now. So I know I have those in my house or in my garage or in my basement, I cannot find it. So what I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to string some twine along as a top railing. Then I'm going to create a tent that I stake into the ground with landscape staples of deer netting. And I'm going to let that serve for now. As the peas grow, uh, I need to keep the rabbits, squirrels, and deer off of them. So as they grow, I don't want them to get stuck into that deer netting. So as soon as I see them peeking out, I'm going to have to get my other plans in place. But for now, deer netting, hopefully, keep the critters off with a top rail of twine. That would be like, you know, the top of a tent. And overhand knot loop. And I'm just going to hook this. given how unsuccessful this deer netting has been at keeping the deer off in the front yard i'm just hoping we don't get any deer in here but i think it'll work against rabbits or squirrels maybe it's worth a try okay and i'm using these landscape staples to hold this into place Pull it up and double it down here so that it um, will have a harder time breaking if something pulls on it. And there you have it, friends, the first vegetables of the season put into the ground outdoors, February 19th here in Zone 7, Baltimore, Maryland. Our last average frost date is April 12th, so this is about eight weeks before our average last frost. Um, so wherever you live, you could look to be about six to eight weeks before your average last frost, and that's when you would put yours into the ground, if your soil is workable. All right, so I'm excited to see what happens with these. Um, I'm hoping that this netting will work until they get sprouted. As soon as they sprout, I'll have to come up with another method because I don't want the sprouts to get stuck into that netting because it'll break them if I try to pull the netting off. I do have in mind, like I said, some sort of decorative um, trellising system that hopefully I can keep going down the hill. Temporary, it's not going to be a permanent structure, but something pretty. So if you have suggestions for me, ideally something inexpensive, that'd be awesome. Even if it's just simple bamboo stakes with some... Uh, pretty twine or I don't know what it'll be but hopefully I want it to be a pretty installation uh, not just functional so thank you for joining me today I hope that you're having a wonderful day wherever you are whatever your garden season is right now I hope you're having a nice time and I will see you again in another video real soon take care bye-bye